So good morning, everybody. Hi. There's Carrie with me today. We're going to do an adventure tour at the Horn Lake Caves. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, so I've been wanting to do this for a long, long time, and I've lived here like my whole life, and I've never really done this. Well, a tour. I've been in like, you know, on your the own a caves. little bit. But yeah. yeah, so this one, you cannot go on your own. So I'm so excited. I'm it's been nervous. a few years for me. <laughs> I think like 30 years since I was in a cave. So yeah, a little nervous. Yeah, so we're going to have an awesome day, and I hope you enjoy our, our adventure today. So come along with us at Horn Lake Caves. Grab those straps. Nice. Here we go. We can't see you, Judy. <laughs> Think I better adjust. <laughs> Let's see, give me a. Yeah, that's so cool. You have to spray your boots with disinfectant because it can cause some harm to bats. I forget exactly what it says, but I'll find out. Pardon me? White powder. So that then they don't eat and then they starve. So yeah, clean their boots. Now we're gonna start a 25 minute hike. A 25 minute hike to the caves and it's beautiful in here. Beautiful trees. So that combination, we have a lot of limestone, a lot of rain, it creates a lot of caves. So I say a lot of caves. How many caves do you think are on Vancouver Island? Thousands. Thousands. Right? <laughs> okay, thousands. More being explored, like, or more being found like every, every year. Absolutely. So we have sort of documented right now about 1,800. Um, mm -hmm. 3,000 in total is the guess. So there's a lot of little signs or indicators that there is a cave nearby or sort of a signal sign or a, like, with drones or like little things that we can look for to sort of indicate that there is something there. We just can't find that entrance yet. So 3,000 in total, but so far 1,800. So we actually have more caves here than the rest of Canada combined. So this is the caving capital of the world right now. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet place to be, especially if you like caves. Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing about limestone is it is a sedimentary rock. So it was actually made from ancient dead sea creatures. So this was formed at the bottom of the ocean. These sea creatures died. They floated down, compressed with all that pressure and built up in these layers. And eventually we get this beautiful rock. Um, the other thing about that is we do tend to find a lot of fossils in the rock because of that. Um, I can point a couple of them out. Most common ones we have here are called a crinoid. We can talk more about those later though. But when some dark in here. It might be a bit more familiar than you think. So what about stalactites and stalagmites? Yeah. You've heard of those for sure. Those are calcium-based crystals, so those are calcite. We will definitely see those today. We'll also see flowstone, draperies, um, popcorn rock, soda straws, all that fun stuff. So there's like over a hundred different formation types. Now how these are formed is actually it starts out here. So rainwater coming down, it's picking up CO2 from, the, um, from all the soil and the decaying plant matter in this kind of ecosystem. Picks that CO2 up, gets into the rock, starts eating away at the rock, and the rock is very much calcium based because it's made of those ancient d dead sea creatures. So it's picking up all the calcium out of the rock as it's going. Once it hits the actual cave, it's a different atmosphere. And so it actually has to off gas to stabilize. And so then wherever it's sort of dripping with time, it's leaving a tiny little deposit of calcium. And then where it continues to do that, so each drip, eventually it's gonna form into these big stalactites and stalagmites, all that. So all of this happens basically one water droplet at a time, which is crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> It really looks like Sasquatch. Good break. The baby came. Good. Don't go in here first. It's like one more stop. Um, I do have to talk a little bit more about the crystal formations because we're going to see those the most in this cave. And the most important thing with our crystals or our calcite is that we're not touching it. 
So we found over the years that actually touching these crystals or this calcite can do a lot of damage to it. So it allows dirts and chemicals from our hands to get in the pores of it. And it actually compresses it down on a microscopic level and it creates this very waxy surface. So water rolls over top of it and it can't actually deposit any more of that calcium into it. So it completely stops the growth. And you'll see cases of this where it actually starts to turn brown or sometimes black. So in its natural form, our calcite should be very white, white almost translucent. Yeah. Mm. So makes it nice in the cave though, especially because this one's very healthy. If you see something that's very white underground today, just make sure you're trying to keep your hands off of it or your body off of it. Don't, don't go like, you know, slapping mm. it around. Um, if you're ever unsure, just ask. Um, no problem with that. Um, but usually anything kind of that muddy brown color or the white really want to keep our hands off of. Does that seem like a fair thing? Yep. Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have some very old formations in there. Um, our soda straws, which grow one inch every 100 years, are also super delicate. So if you touch one of them, it would actually shatter immediately and you would see that immediate damage. So we do want to do our best to be very careful underground today, but for the most part, everything's pretty easy to not damage. So we're going in cave number one. I believe it's the river bend. Urban cave? Yes. yes. So here we go. Uh, I guess before I lock us in, is everyone doing okay? Yeah. Yep. No yeah. one's freaking out? Okay, fantastic. We're being locked in. Some of them have actually shattered. Oh. Hmm. But we've had earthquakes in the past 1,200 years and those things haven't fallen off. So that tells me that this cave is very, very stable and where we are is safe. Um, so it goes against everything you want to believe, but actually being underground with an earthquake is one of the safest places you can be. Oh. The building is made out of where you are for sure, but very, very stable place. And the idea behind that is um, when you're above ground and an earthquake happens, you're kind of moving against the earth. Whereas when we're underground, we're in the earth, so instead of moving against it, we're just rocking with it. So you wouldn't actually feel it. If there was an earthquake here right now, we wouldn't know. Cool. So, pretty nice. That's cool. I don't know if anyone was thinking about earthquakes, but now you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was our discussion on our way here. <laughs> if you touch any felt like we're in the cave, just immediately touch the arm. So, okay. So, um, now, this is what we call cauliflower rock or brain rock. It kind of looks like that. The thing I think is really cool about this calcite, especially this stuff, is it feels like your teeth. Um, we have another nice piece of calcite. It's what we call the recovery wall. It gives you a better idea of what active growing calcite is very wet, kind of slimy looking, right next to this dry, dormant calcite. So, this still can regrow and recover. It's just that water has to start flowing over top of it for it to do that. Um, so, it's still very healthy. These really cool little shark teeth kind of jagged little pointy teeth sitting there. A um, little bit of spray paint on this one as well, but again, we're seeing a really good recovery. So this spray paint in this cave actually happened in 1982. Someone broke into the cave because um, we didn't like that they put gates on the caves. Um, and they put some spray paint on the formations, broke a couple things. So you'll see a tiny bit of damage in this cave. But for the most part, it's been pretty well protected and people have been pretty respectful of everything that we've got. So not too much by comparison. So. Around, don't want you to fall over. Um, if you need the light back on, not a problem, turn your light back on. Okay. I'll get your light off oh, just a second here. Where's my yeah. light? Just twist it. <laughs> That's the next challenge. Figure out how to get it back on. Thank you. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, you should not be falling. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we are going to head back up to daylight. We're going to go up a little bit of a different route. Um, you did it. You did it. We did one. First one done. First one. So this is our next cave that we're going into. Um, kind of gives you a good difference in cave entrances. Um, this... No. No. So we can't prove it yet, but our caves are all connected somehow <laughs> um, in some way or form. Um, Riverbend Cave, though, does actually exit at Lower Cave just down that way. So that is the resurgence. There's about 80 meters of passage, though, that's unexplored between the two caves because it's completely... It's an impossible section, right? 
it's filled with water. So we actually tried draining it this year and we got about 80 meters or I think maybe a little less than that. And uh, it kept going. So we have to drain more. So we're gonna try it again this year and see what we can do. Um, but we think it'd be kind of neat to actually do a whole tour all the way through yeah, come out on this side. Um, but this cave actually connects to Euclid's cave, which is a cave that is completely closed. Um, so no one's been in there for years. <laughs> and we're not allowed to go in, so. BC parks and old caving regulations and issues, I guess. <laughs> um, Euclid's was one of the first caves that was found and when it was found, it was deemed to be the prettiest cave on Vancouver Island. Um, they ran tours through it originally and it did a ton of damage because we didn't know about calcite and how it did damage. Um, and then once they started realizing this change and the damage to the caves, they kind of panicked and threw a big gate and some cement on it <laughs> and then said, no, we're just never going in there. That's another project that we are working on this year that we're trying to actually maybe get it back opened um, and, and start running tours through it again in a safer um, way with kind of different structures in there. So lots of changes for the future. Um, but yeah, I think definitely considering how close all of our caves are together, they're all connected in some way or form. Does everyone feel comfortable about going into this cave? Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, first challenge is right off the bat. You have to turn your body sideways, put your right shoulder first. You're going to walk up a couple little steps, and then you'll be into the cave. Okay. Turn your lights on, helmets on. Ooh. Locked gate. No. <laughs> Having said that, the slide is not much different for speed wise. Uh, it is Canada's longest cave slide, but it is also Canada's slowest slide ever. So, which is pretty best. That's why we have to stop here. Yeah. Maybe I need to get out of the way. I think. Should we go up top? I guess so. Gosh, we're all gonna get piled up in here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can go a little bit farther. Ask her if we can, can take, if we can go up top higher. Kind of feels a little bit, a bit like giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> or being birth. Is there a room up there? <laughs> Oh, look at that. Oh, and then you're going to make the gap, right? Hey, you found that new hole. Wait, Did you get a good job? Can I pass this off then? No. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. This was the party cave. Still has good hearing. I think otherwise. <laughs> but some really, really weird stories that definitely went on in here. There's a lot more spray paint in this cave, a lot more damage, as we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but the next step in our little journey, now that we've climbed this waterfall, is actually to go down Canada's only cave slide. Ooh, we're here. <laughs> only cave slide? Yeah, I did. Top. I went fast. <laughs> Next slider. I either like cave here or go really weird places to cave, like Africa, so, yeah. Um, so there's two ways out of this cave, so you can go out the way we came in, not a problem, you can see daylight, just go towards it. Or if you want more of a challenge, you can go through the cheese barrier, which is straight through this way. It's tighter. <laughs> the biggest thing about this is you have to get close to the ground to actually be able to fit through it, and then you turn to the left and you wiggle your way out to that side. So There's spiders, water, all the fun stuff in it. Face to the left, to turn left. You can fix the right, and that's your oh. challenge. You gotta figure out whatever you think works. I don't limbo. Yeah, the only thing really, like I said, is just gotta stay close to the ground because there's not enough space up top, and your helmet generally won't fit. So cool. You can definitely give it a go. It is called the cheese grater for a reason. It will actually rip your clothes if you are not careful. So if you're super fond of something you're wearing, just like a jacket, <laughs> take it off. I'll take it through the regular way. Um, if not, you can just if you feel something snagging, try and unhook yourself. Don't just like tear through. So, but if you want to give it a go, you can give it a go. If you don't, you can go the regular way. And you can choose it individually. It's not like the yeah, whole group has to go. One person goes. <laughs> <laughs> goes. <laughs> There's Carrie coming out of the cheese grater. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm good. <laughs> not stuck yet. Good job. <laughs> Way to go. Hey, we did it. <laughs> Way to go, Carrie. Carrie gets a beer. Super proud of Carrie and I. We did the two and a half hour cave tour here at Fortnite Cave. Fortnite Cave. Carrie went through the cheese grater on the way out. <laughs> got stuck part way. She was, but she made it. She made it out. It's all good. The slide was super fun, and the ladders. And I didn't know we were going to be hiking up the waterfall, so that was yeah, super that was fun. Pretty cool. And I have like four inches of uh, water water in my gum boot <laughs> that I gotta uh, get out in a little while, but that's okay. And we had good. it was a great day. Thanks for inviting. That's so fun. Yeah, I pretty much begged Carrie to come. <laughs> Didn't have to beg too hard. No. That's awesome. And we have all these lovely people with us today on our tour and a fabulous tour guide. Some from as far away, Australia and South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. And Nanaimo. That's not very far, but we're not Make very it. far either. <laughs> yeah, we're it's the our backyard. That's okay. we see you guys back at some point or maybe I'll see you in Australia one day yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be pretty cool <laughs> for sure thanks awesome. everybody thank you thank you everybody yeah. <laughs> 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 That's gonna go on the. Uh, that's gonna go on the end. Slow motion. <laughs> so, yeah, be very. Yeah. 
<laughs> what an interesting tour. <laughs> Later. Um, so I started working at Horn Lake Caves as a summer job. So I was actually training as an archaeologist in university and I just needed something to cover for the summer. Um, and I took this because it was like outdoors and it was something I didn't know about and just luckily got hired for it. Um, and so that first year was like really hard because I had no background, but the majority of people that come here have no background in caving or caves, so it's not uncommon. We do all of our in-house training here as well, so we'll provide you with the basis of what you need. Um, the longer you work here, the more you pick up on. I found that I was very interested in it, so I ended up caving outside of here um, and doing different projects like working in Canada's deepest cave, Canada's longest cave, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it really just comes down to your interest level and what you would like to do. How but many years have you been here? I've been here since 2017. Nice. You look like the job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not not everyone can say that, so I'm I'm pretty yeah. special that I'm able to actually say that I truly enjoy what I do, um, you know, and being able to teach people about different worlds and, and stuff. And and as I said before on tour, you know, part of the thing for me that's so interesting is it is always changing. We know nothing about caves at this point, so we're always learning new things, and it's always it's never stagnant, essentially. Yeah. No, it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. I learned so much from you today. Oh, so God. much about all the little bugs and the, yeah. and the different kind of formations in the caves and all that kind of stuff. That's what I like to hear. I'm so happy <laughs> I came today and so happy that Carrie decided to come with me. Thank I you. begged her to come with me. Oh, right on. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Yeah. yeah. But no, and I, I really do mean it. It's not every day you get groups that are so willing to listen and learn. Um, nice. So I do really appreciate it because that's like my favorite part of the job is teaching people. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on our caving adventure today. I had such a good time. So proud of myself for doing that because I was really nervous. How about you? You Were did you a good job. Yeah, I was nervous this morning too, but we did it. Yes. It was good. So fun. Highly recommend it. Horn Lake Cave Tours in Horn Lake, British Columbia. So thanks so much for coming along on our adventure today and we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.